Hey there, Jed Corbin is here with the Exercise Physiology Show. This is episode number 35. I want to say 35. Um, and let me just double check that. And I don't, the reason I make these is because I'm an exercise physiologist. Um, I am a former fat kid, right? It's number 34. Whoa, exercise physiology show. The exercise physiology show number 34. <clears throat> Apologize for being, you know, not knowing what number I'm on, but number 34. Uh, Kirby Puckett's number, right? Um, why do I do this, right? Former fat kid, like I said, I just feel like there's a lot of crap out there as far as stuff on the internet. I feel like my education, my experience, uh, I'm a filter for a lot of this stuff. And I get to be, right? I get to be a filter for a lot of this stuff. Plus, where else would you go, right? Would you go to a doctor? Cool, go to your doctor. That's what I'm saying. So today's show, um, I have actually the benefit of hanging out with uh, a dietitian every day, a nurse practitioner every day, <clears throat> and an important topic got brought up yesterday, I'd like to bring it here to you guys, um, would be vitamin D deficiency. Okay, I live in Minnesota, and there's a lot of it. Um, if you're in a state that's, you know, where you it's cold way more than it's warm, you're probably gonna have this. Um, but a vitamin D deficiency actually can, actually can help, um, can hurt, right, I shouldn't say, um, increase your risk for diabetes, um, heart disease, and a plethora of other problems like, right, such as the weight gain, uh oh, right? Um, weight gain is what I was like, what, wait, wait, what, right? Um, vitamin D, right? How do you get it? Well, the sun is a great way. Um, there are a few juices out there, but I wouldn't recommend that's too, too much sugar and junk like that. But um, you can get it from animal, right? Animal based foods, right? Natural animal like egg yolks, um, fish, uh, meat, stuff like that um, but if you're if you're not you know if you're a vegetarian which I get uh, you may need to supplement but you may need to supplement anyway even if you're not a vegetarian um, vitamin D you can get through pill form oh another way you can get it would be um, a beef liver right so liver and then the cod oil um, but yeah a supplement if you can't get any of that stuff so an active form of vitamin D don't get the inactive form um, usually the active forms come in droplets like the little you know one droplet is like 1,000 international units or I use um, you can have you know up to two well 2,000 I use one to two thousand I use check with your doctor to be you know to know your safe level but um, one to two thousand I use is, is probably good international units again um, you know you can go up to four thousand is probably safe upper limit um, six to eight thousand I've heard from other dietitians um, and you know functional functional medicine nurse practitioners uh, but yeah you know you got to know your therapeutic dosage dr. Hyman's a good good source that's kind of where I'm learning some of the stuff for a lot of the stuff I've learned um, but yeah that's vitamin D deficiency it can help with weight loss right it can help with it well especially uh, children if you have if they have vitamin D deficiency um, they can they can not acquire but what's the word for it, right they can get asthma um, older adults you, you know or even adults we have bone pain uh, joint pain we have muscle weakness those are some of the signs and symptoms but even if we don't have it you can still you can still don't have the signs and symptoms you can still actually 
have a vitamin D deficiency. Um, yeah, so I mean, take those droplets once a day. It can promote healing, right? It can promote, um, can actually decrease your risk for heart disease, some cancers, uh, like breast cancer. Um, it can prevent type one, type two diabetes. So that's, you know, I mean, just a quick bit on vitamin D. Be sure to get your vitamin D. And especially coming into these winter months, we're gonna need it. Um, you know, it makes you feel good too, right? So, uh, I was also talking with my friend Lynn, right? She had, um, hopefully she doesn't mind me bringing her up right here, but she had <coughs> messaged me yesterday saying, I am done eating because I gained two pounds. Let me talk about that. It is okay if you gain two pounds in a day. Now, what do I mean? <clears throat> Let me explain that. Your weight fluctuates. <clears throat> when you eat and drink food, or when you eat food and drink fluids, sorry, um, you, that weight sticks to you, right? I mean, that is physical weight. Like, this water is full. This is probably 16 ounces. This is about a pound. If I would drink all of this right now, this is a pound, okay? <clears throat> so if my suggestion for those who cannot, you know, endure the pain of seeing the weight go up, don't weigh yourself every day. Weigh yourself once a week, okay? <clears throat> you can fluctuate one to two pounds per day if you, if you weigh yourself every day. I mean, it's, it's a gradual decline, and make sure, and I know we've covered this before, make sure you're using a consistent scale, the same scale. Make sure you're <clears throat> using the same clothing that you weigh in, right, that you have, that you're weighing, standing on the scale with. Um, make sure it's the same time, make sure it's the same day. I mean, you have to eliminate all the variables when we're talking about weight. Because if you have a heavier shirt on than you did last week, well, that's gonna skew the scale, okay? So don't worry about if you gain one to two pounds in a day and then the next day, I mean, if you can't handle it, I mean, it's as simple as don't weigh yourself. You work hard, you know what you're doing. If you're eating, if you're, if you're eating, you know, some pretty shitty food, you're gonna know and don't be surprised if the scale goes up, if your weight goes up. Because you can't out-exercise a poor diet. You just can't. You can't out-train a poor diet. Sorry. So that's what it is. So that is the, you know, the fluctuation of weight. It's gonna happen. It happens to me. I'm not outside any of this stuff. Okay, the other, another question, another topic I would love to bring here, okay? <laughs> and crunches, is crunches, okay? Why are crunches, what do, what do crunches do for your body? Why do I think they're kind of, they should be phased out of your exercise routine? Um, crunches work a very small part of your core. Like they literally, I mean, they only work, like your rectus abdominis, which is, you know, your six pack part, right? If you want to look at that. Um, and that's about it. Like, and there isn't, it doesn't even touch all of that. It touches most of it, but what it really does, it puts a lot of pressure into your low back. So what I'm finding is like wood chops I brought up yesterday. Um, doing a wad coming up here with wood chops in it. And anything with rotation, keeping your core tight, you know, protecting your low back, but the, the straight leg raises too, those put a lot of pressure in your low back, no good. So what are ideas instead of that, right? Plank, planking is huge, right? It is freaking crazy huge. Um, your wood chops, anything with rotation, um, you can do, here's the steering wheel. <laughs> you can do, um, Anything like a side plank, 
you can do mountain climbers anything basically functional training wise okay if you guys want me to do like a full wad of we could call it instead of crunches wad basically right do all of this instead of crunches wad let me know i'll definitely get to that so there it is that's episode number 34 34 not 35 right <clears throat> and um let me know what you think on the uh on the instead of crunches wad that's your comment I would love to hear from you. If you would like me to do that, I'll throw something together. Not throw it together. I'll put together um, a, co a full, you know, like a like a core core wad workout of the day just for core. And then you can come back to it when you feel like you like you want to work your core every day or every other day, or whatever fits your style. But I try to include actually I include a core exercise in every workout of the day. You may not know it, but I do. Like it's in there. It's always in my head. How do I how do I include either chest, shoulders, triceps, and back, or with your core in there? Or how do I put legs and core in there? Something like that. That's kind of my that's my secret behind what I'm creating. So yeah, let me know if you want the instead of crunches wad. I'll create it. And as always, if you are willing to change from the neck up, you will change from the neck down. Believe in yourself. By now, you have to know I do. Have a great day. Bye for now.